Are you concerned about your future? We invite you to consider Option Canada. I'm a former Canadian immigration officer and a senior case analyst and I've served the Canadian government for 16 years. I provide accurate assessment on every case and I'll be happy to assist you in making Canada your home. For the past 26 years, we have assisted professionals, business people, senior managers and the self-employed worldwide to relocate to Canada. We can help you and loved ones back home live the Canadian dream. Do it once, do it right. Welcome viewers, this is Anis Farooqi with another episode of Prime Time with Anis Farooqi and uh, we always cover the international current affairs as well as local affairs and as the Canadian election date 21st October is getting close, we would like to bring you more knowledge and information about all the political activities happening in uh, Canada, the federal elections and the policies of the political parties and for that we have today in our studio two very important people who can throw some light on a new political party which is PPC, People's Party of Canada. The leadership is Maxime Bernier but why they are here and why people are going to vote for them, why not liberals and conservative, this is the topic of today's debate. We will show you and let me introduce you to my guest, uh, Cornelio Chizu uh, is a candidate from Oxford Pickering area and Mr. Tahir Gora is from Mississauga Malton area as a candidate for federal riding. Welcome both of you. Thank you, Thank you very so, much. So as I said, like uh, you uh, have a new party, a new leadership and uh, people would like to know more about it and we are here to inform people, to educate people and you will educate me as well as my audience uh, why we should be, uh, people should be voting for you. So, Cornelio, I would start with you. Uh, why PPC and what is your background in politics? So, um, thank you very much for the question. Uh, my background in politics is the following. I was a member of parliament between 2011-2015 and uh, when uh, the prime minister was uh, Mr. Harper. So, I uh, worked very hard in, in the parliament. Uh, I was in the defense committee and uh, in the veterans committee. I just want to mention that uh, I am a professional engineer and I'm also a military engineer with services in Bosnia and Herzegovina and in uh, Kandahar, Afghanistan. So uh, that, uh, that incentivated me to, to, uh, to work for Canadians. So um, the fact that uh, I joined the People's Party of Canada is uh, due uh, because I believe that the People's Party of Canada, as the name it is, is looking for the interest of the people, the Canadians. We need to look at our own people before we are committing funds and monies uh, overseas for the taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. The taxpayers' money are a very valuable asset yeah. for us. And mm -hmm. that should be used basically for Canadians first. So we'll get into that uh, in a little bit. Uh, so uh, next to you is Tahir Gora, is uh, another candidate for People's Party of Canada from Mississauga Malton. Uh, we also welcome you and you are a known uh, community person, um, a media personality and very vocal in human rights uh, as an activist, civil rights activist, liberty, civil liberty activist. So Tahir Gora also uh, please tell us more about that. Uh, uh, you, you've been loyal conservative for a very long time now. I see you as a PPC candidate. What's going on? No, actually, uh, I personally find uh, People's Party of Canada is the actual conservative party. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wanted to uh, stick uh, myself with the party I, I believe in. And which is, of course, the People's Party of Canada. Because uh, sadly, uh, um, over the period of uh, last couple of years, uh, um, I could clearly see that uh, Conservative Party of Canada deviating 
from conservative values as well as pandering towards uh, ethnic vote banks and uh, th that's what following is the not the, uh, following the same Canadian same value. Following the same footsteps which liberal just to secure the votes and do whatever needs to be done to secure the votes even they have to go and uh, uh, above their values and yeah, uh, you, guidelines. You know Anis, I like to add one thing as a first uh, generation immigrant mm -hmm. I moved to Canada for Canadian value. Right. I didn't want to see the kind of politics what we happen to experience in our back home. Right. And when I find, uh, uh, first I found liberal and then I realized that the conservatives, they are on the same footsteps. All right. uh, uh, you know, the kind of politics we left back home and uh, we wanted to experience uh, Canadian transparent politics in Canada and well, as, I as, think PPC as stands for it. As the science says, strong and free. Uh, exactly, uh, it is. And it is. in many speeches, Maxime has been focusing and emphasizing on the Canadian values um, yes. and that is uh, the, the secret word, you know, that's a key word for, uh, we have to understand that maybe we are forgetting it. You know, people will, uh, you know, the usual politicians will tell us, oh, but we don't have a definition of Canadian values. Yes, we have a definition. Canada was born, Canada is here, and Canada will be in the future. Yeah. And we are called Canada. Yeah. That is our nation. So we have traditions, we have uh, embracing immigrants from all over the world, but we need to build the country together. So unity is our strength, not divisiveness. Yeah. And let's see, uh, uh, so much uh, emphasized diversity and so on and uh, so on. unity. So what's we wrong with diversity? What is wrong with diversity? L like diversity why Maxime is saying that diversity is basically dividing. It's not integrating. Diversity when you are using that word diversity in the wrong way and for the wrong purpose. Uh, that uh, is dividing. Is us. it making pe like a different tribes of people? Different tribes and you are starting to isolate people from people, from one community to another. We are here in Canada to be all together okay. and our main purpose is to build the country which all, we all choose to come to Canada. That's this, what is what, this is what I have seen right. uh, as, as a journalist, as an opinion maker, as a columnist, I have observed that uh, previous government, the predecessors of political leadership has put every ethnic community in a block in a slot let's for example if they are in a mosque they stay in the mosque and the prime minister goes there then they go to a gurdwara or a church or anywhere they are not mingling with each other they are not integrating with each other and there is a boundary there's a big wall like a trump wall in between each of them is is this what maxime is trying to you know break these bridges and you know put everybody as a true Canadian. Is that right kind of uh, perception? Maxim, Maxim tries to mend to the, the obstacles. Exactly. We are all together. We can learn from together. But my, so my question is, am I right in that kind of terminology? Uh, yes, you are right. Actually, uh, our party and our leader both and our candidates as well, we, uh, uh, we believe in unity. When it comes up this buzzword diversity, diversity is kind of boxing different communities in different ghettos. Right. We do not support ghettoization. Diversity is not about, uh, uh, you know, people come from different backgrounds. Diversity is more about ideas coming from different backgrounds. Into so Canadian values. Into, I mean, into Canada. Into with Canada. each other. Yeah, yeah. Sharing exactly. the values. What's going other. wrong these days? Right. You cannot talk freely. You cannot speak your mind freely in mainstream Canadian media. They just label you either Islamophobe or racist yeah. or xenophobe. Yeah. I mean, I come from uh, Muslim South Asian background. How could I be Islamophobe yeah. when I criticize M103? Yeah. Because M103 is not in the interest of Canada. It is dividing Canadians.
Yeah. So, so diversity means that my diverse opinion should be heard and accepted equally. But unfortunately, our mainstream media, our mainstream political parties, before our party came into existence, they, they were challenging uh, uh, those dissident ideas. Okay. Absolutely. A wise man once said, uh, freedom of expression is mother of all freedom. Yes. Right? So, do you think that this kind of uh, motions, Islamophobe, political correctness, is this putting Canada behind from its core values? Absolutely. Absolutely. We need, we are here all from different backgrounds to, to have our main purpose is to building this country. Freely. With Freely. Freedom. Freely, we need to be able to discuss issues between ourselves without any kind of labeling. You know, you are this, you are that, you are, you know. So we need to be able to uh, to discuss issues which are our common interest to have better jobs, to have better education for our children, and you know, to better to better country. So I think that every immigrant who came to Canada, they were not happy in their own country. Mm -hmm. So they came with a purpose to build a new life and to build a country which is much more better than the country that they left. Yeah. So I'm not speaking about the, the, the native people. Of course, the native people are very important for us and uh, we need to consider them because they have also experiences and we have seen in the history. Otherwise, the first settlers in Euro from Europe, they were not able to survive if they would not learn from the native people how to, yeah. to, uh, to survive and how to... Uh, so they uh, learned the lesson from... They the learned. Okay. So they learn. So the, the things which we have a golden, we are sitting on the golden mine, we can learn from each other, but we should have one purpose to build a better country for all of us. For all of us. So, and then th this comes to the immigration, uh, very important point for, for PPC. And you know, wh when we are, I'm talking about these points because these are the core points Maxime Bernier, your leadership has brought up uh, in many occasions. And one of them is immigration, less immigration, more integration. What does that mean? No, of course, it is very important. Uh, because there was a time when we needed a huge, huge number of immigrants. Okay. But now we are in a kind of a situation when we have gone through all those, uh, uh, you know, mass immigration, mm -hmm. and now we know that uh, we need a relatively less immigrant. Mm -hmm. uh, we need skilled immigrants so that they could integrate into our society. But human development is always uh, good for any country, any development, you know, like development wise you need humans, you need the immigration. Um, no, but we are not uh, but also asking to, to eliminate or something. We are not asking to finish immigration uh, at all. We yeah. are asking, we are still suggesting 150,000 immigrants to Canada. Quality immigrants, quality uh, immigration. Skilled immigrants and uh, and he said, you talked about integration. How integration would become possible until unless new immigrants don't become part of Canadian culture? Right. So here is always a complicated and complex debate. What is Canadian culture? Right. Of course, Canadian culture is based on Western civilization right. because the settlers uh, uh, set those foundation. Right. So there for, is there is a instance, value there yeah. is a ca Canadian culture and there is values absolutely for, they, because a lot of people are saying what is Canadian culture what is value what are you talking about there is no such thing yeah, no. not even right. lots of people even our Prime Minister Justin Trudeau when he says that there are no core Canadian values that statement hurts me a lot yeah. because Anis for instance you and I came from Pakistan we didn't come to Canada for some Pakistani culture right. We came here for some Canadian culture, right. you know. Yeah, right. So those values were dear to us. Based on those values, we moved to Canada. Yeah, we embraced it, uh, Cornelio. That uh, every immigrant, 
embraced on their own will and wish the Canadian immigration. And then we come to a country with a lot of colors, a lot of, you know, like flavors and touches uh, to embed into the Canadian fabric rather than, you know, um, put and, a bad uh, color not, on. Not only to integrate in the Canadian fabric, but also they are values to bring and to improve the yeah, Canadian, uh, the Canadian fabric. Absolutely. So this is that I see that the immigration can contribute right. to evolution mm -hmm. of the Canadian culture, right. but in the right way, in mm -hmm. the in the way that the main Very purpose yeah, is yeah. to build this country. Right. Right. So basically, again, that means that they, the people who are critic who are saying that, uh, oh, Maxime is against immigration, PPC is, you know, anti-immigrants. Not at all. We is are that not. correct? Is no, that we, image going? We, uh, we are not anti-immigrant. Uh, uh, we are pro-immigrant, but we want uh, to have more skilled immigrants to Canada. And uh, we, we are suggesting to slash immigration number based on our current economic situation. And also we believe in integrating new Canadians into Canadian society. And as I was speaking earlier, I mean, Canadian values are based on f total freedom of expression, uh, individual freedom, separation of religion and politics, as well as gender equality. Right. So these are the universal human values. Right. These are not just the Canadian values. Yeah. These, are, these are the universal human values. Absolutely. Culture is different. Yeah. Values to some extent are different. And at, at some point, culture and value, they go hand in hand. So Cornelius, the religious um, values, symbols, uh, you know, apparel, the costumes are... Are, sh shouldn't be this be your private matter? Look, or a public should be should be a private matter. And I tell you something. Uh, my ancestors, my uh, myself. I am coming from uh, a country which was a country at that time, which had the first freedom of religion in 1568. Okay. So long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. So for this one, half of my family is Protestant, half of my family is Catholic, but we didn't have had that kind of problems. You know, religious was religion, was a private matter, and right. and you, you were tolerating everything, you mm -hmm. know, you were embracing everybody, at, you know, and the condition was to don't impose mm -hmm. anything on the other... On anybody. On anybody, on any other religions. Right. So that was the main freedom Yeah, but of nobody's religion. imposing relig their own religion to other Canadians in, in well, Canada Well, you know, some, some people, they have a tendency to impose religions and so on. Okay, mm -hmm. that was uh, during the history. Mm -hmm. So at that time, you know, if you are looking also in the Western history, you know, some people, uh, you know, they, they were Protestants, they were trying to convert them back to Catholicism and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. So the freedom of religion is a, a basic freedom. Mm -hmm. However, we need to have the separation between the religion mm -hmm. and the state. So that is, that is the, the, the main, main problems that uh, if we are not standing for that, then we'll create animosities in our society. Right. So now, since PPC is a new party and um, it's going to be hard to, you know, knock the doors and uh, convince already uh, liberals and conservative to vote for P PPC, um, who do you think is your audience? What are you going to individually? You're going to knock the doors and convince based on what? Why should Look, liberals and conservative vote for PPC now? I can tell you something that they are not liberals or conservatives. They are people, and people. You know, a lot of the traditional political parties are thinking that people are they don't know politics, they don't follow the events, and so on. The people are knowledgeable, and remember one thing. People will vote you in, people will vote you out. Yeah. Yeah. So we cannot say that they are liberals, conservatives, and so on. If the people will see that our ideas are in line with the people wants, they will vote for us. Right. doesn't matter if they voted in, in before liberal, conservative, green, or NDP. Mm -hmm. If they see some hope in what we are proposing to them, they will vote for us. Yeah. Tahir, I've seen a trend lately when I've been monitoring and observing this uh, emerging of PPC 
that a lot of uh, uh, existing conservatives, uh, political activists, and two examples are right here in, in my studio today, you and um, Cornelio, um, are fed up with party and they, are, they have joined hands with Maxime and it could be a huge number across Canada. We haven't seen the numbers and polls yet, but I can see the trend. Um, why is it happening? Like why people from liberal are not joining you, but conservatives are like done and they're fed up with you. I think you, you mentioned it's a conservative values. They are not the true values anymore and they are kind of a lip con now. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, I would say, of course, conservatives have more uh, inclination towards uh, PPC. Yeah. But uh, I also see a good trend from uh, other uh, voters as well. Right. Because as Cornel said, it's not just the, uh, you know, members of the political parties yeah. who vote for, People also. Um, I mean, ordinary, ordinary citizens who don't know much about politics, who, who just look into the agenda of political parties. Okay. And I assure you uh, that, and I can see uh, um, in my writing particularly, that the residents, they, they are keen to learn more about uh, uh, People's Party of Canada okay. because residents know already about people, uh, about Conservative Party as well as Liberal Party. And many are fed up now. Yeah. Many are fed up now because our party's strategy, our party's uh, policies are crystal clear. And uh, uh, you, you would see that uh, we will surprise other political parties okay. uh, in, in coming election. Okay. Now, now the question is the most important question is the dollar, the, the, the amount, the finances of the country. And uh, Maxime has said that the money spent overseas on number of uh, areas, defense or whatnot, uh, will be minimized and maximized spent on Canadians. So we will, uh, he will do a lot of cut downs or thing, which is in terms he uses as globalist, right? So he said Canada is not a welfare state uh, and Correct. we will spend money on Canadians first. What do you mean by that? So I mean, uh, for example, we are giving a lot of donations. Actually, we are one of the main uh, uh, financial uh, contributor to the United Nations. Mm -hmm. You know, foreign aid, we need to know where our taxpayers' money is spent mm -hmm. and how we spent. Mm -hmm. We don't have accountability for that. Mm -hmm. That is, that was vali valid also in the liberal government, in the conservative government. Yeah. So we need more accountability mm -hmm. for the money that we are giving to the United Nations, to other countries and so on. Where is going? Is taxpayers' money? Is our people's money? Right. So, if we can, we can see that there are many situations in which the money is spent and is arriving in the wrong hands, mm -hmm. and that is taxpayers' money. So, in Afghanistan, arrived in the wrong hands, fighting against us, mm -hmm. Canadians. What, 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 what example? What are you referring to? Like when you're saying. Uh, which money went to who? Like well, when you are giving foreign aid and you are giving through other c companies, to other uh, like... Uh, uh, like you're saying Canadian money was given, went into the wrong hands and yes, uh, Canadian soldiers got killed with that? Well, you know, probably, probably, yeah. I don't know or the, that. Or the NATO allies or... But the, fa the NATO allies for sure. But uh, probably it is that if you are not accountable for the money that you are giving for a certain purpose mm -hmm. to a non non uh, uh, non uh, NGO to right. an NGO non government association, uh, yeah, which yeah. we are giving all and we are sure that they are managing the money correctly, but we don't have an accountability. We don't have a report back from them. Yeah. That, we are that, trusting them that they will deliver the money. But that is that is the money for, for, for foreign funding you're talking. I'm talking about when he said Canada is not a welfare state, you know, and Well, that is the welfare state. Canada that has been a welfare state. It's, uh, Canada has known But not for is the, the state. Welfare, welfare state for all the countries. So mm -hmm. that he meant that one. Okay. That we are not giving all. We are giving you hundred million dollars to be to build infrastructure in uh, some other country. Right. Okay, and I will not name yeah, the country, yeah, but yeah. we are giving hundred million or twenty million dollars to another country to build roads and so on. 
we need that money for ourselves first. Yeah, well, I tweeted this morning that I need my potholes fixed first exactly. in the local community exactly. before we can build, uh, you know, highways. You know, uh, that country. is that he meant that is welfare. Say, oh, we are giving it to you, we are giving it to you. Yeah. Because, you know, that is our money. So you need to you be responsible for the taxpayers' money. Yeah. We need to build infrastructure, we need to build subway, we need to build something, you know, yeah, yeah. in Toronto. We didn't build a subway in 25 years or right. something like exactly. this. Uh, a major, major absolutely, subway. Absolutely. Okay. So, Tahir, this blank check that governments have been writing to these foreign uh, institutions or NGOs is taking away money from our existing economy and going absolutely. outside, right? Um, and this, this nobody has paid attention in past 20 years, 30 years. Unfortunately, uh, this is also naivety of uh, uh, political parties as well as uh, their special interest groups right. pandering towards certain interests. Right. Uh, but when uh, our party says that we are not welfare state for the planet, right? Yes. You know, we are welfare right. state for for Canadians. Right. I mean, it is not advisable. It is not wise that our government and our uh, country goes into debt and we are uh, uh, spending money outside Canada. Yeah. So that is not a logic. Right. Uh, our party talks about common sense. Our party talks about uh, uh, accountability. Our party talks about Canadian first. Right. And that should be the way for any Canadian party, but unfortunately other political parties are not working on, on those lines, but our party is sticking to Canadian first. Okay. So well, I did touch it, upon this. It doesn't uh, do you mean, I something? just want to add something. Yeah. It doesn't mean if it is an, uh, a war disaster that we are not contributing because right. we are Canadians and we are compassionate. Right. But you know to And we have friends and allies. Friends and allies, but but we have basically, you know, it is a disaster in the world. We will contribute to the right. disaster to, to relief, right. but we will be not be the welfare state for other right. projects which we don't know right. where the money is spent. Right, yeah. right. Uh, I did touch upon uh, the the separation of religion from the state affairs, but uh, um, the people would like to know this question very interestingly that uh, uh, the religious symbols in the government uh, sector in Quebec were uh, are not allowed now anymore right so and is that going to be employed upon all over canada when uh, ppc uh, is in government well i i uh, you know we need to take a look at this one okay we are for the separation of state and the religion and state that mm -hmm. is for sure mm -hmm. so um, religious symbols you know i think that we are exaggerating with this religious symbols Re religion i told it is a private matter you can express uh, you can freedom of religion is guaranteed in, mm -hmm. in, uh, in the country. So we, you, you can go to the church. Nobody is telling you, like in the communist time, don't go to the church, right. you know, because if you are going to the church, it's yes. bad. Yes. So you can go to the church, you can express uh, your, fe you, you, your uh, feelings and you can, uh, your religion and so on. But, uh, you know, when it's intimidating, for example, because we are so diverse, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We are diverse. Yeah. It is intimidating for somebody who who is seeing, you know, when facing a person, he's seeing a big uh, cross or, a, I don't know, uh, another religious symbol, and they're, they're telling some, okay, so it is intimidating. Mm. So we, we should not, it's not the place to, to, to over expose these religious symbols. Wh why? Why is that? Like no, but, but the thing is, uh, we have separated religion and politics long ago in Canadian politics. Now, again, it looks like uh, um, uh, other political parties, particularly liberal and conservative, they are getting into that trap again, and particularly to other religions, pandering to other religions to grab uh, ethnic votes. Right. So, Precisely, for instance, talking about situation in Quebec, uh, it's not PPC government in Quebec. Right. This is uh, a Quebec government decision. It has nothing to do with PPC. Yeah. Uh, about separation of religion and politics, about religions, religious symbols, 
PPC never said that they would not allow people to wear their religious symbols. The only issue is, is that that would should we should we allow people wearing very prominent religious symbols to work in government offices? Okay, it's not about practicing in, in, in the general public. public or anything. No, like. practicing we have no issue. Yeah, yeah, Anyone okay. can practice what one's they, religion. What they believe. And this is not even uh, an issue in, in Quebec as yeah, well. Exactly. Quebec Bill, uh, uh, Charter of Rights and Freedom, whatever mm, is called, it is their uh, uh, decision. Right. Yeah. Uh, and as far as I know, it is not about curbing people's religious freedom. It's about asking so people to, to be not clear. wear religious symbol while you are at uh, government jobs. Yeah, this the reason I raised That's a different debate. We need to be very clear. And a strong message has to be given to, to Canadians that uh, there is a misconception. People are being, you know, like misguided. Disinformation is campaign is launched for PPC that oh, PPC is going to stop hijab, niqab, turbans, uh, you know, whatever you use, and uh, it's going to be a complete ban, and everybody will be, you know, wearing maybe mini skirts. I don't. I'm just saying. So. The clear message is that this is just a legislation for the government sector. And, and it is not our government. And uh, it's for the security reason, legislation. For, for intimidation as you said, yeah. like for, for fairness and equality for everybody. And if that is, and that even Maxim, I remember he's saying that it's, it's a dialogue that he's going to open up. It's yes, not it's a dialogue, you yes. know, we need to discuss about yeah. these yeah. issues and to see how, what extent it is acceptable, what extent the contribution from all kinds of with uh, all the, the, the elements of the population about this. Mm -hmm. There must be a debate. Mm -hmm. So you should not close the debate. That is the freedom of speech. We need to arrive at a conclusion together. Yeah. What we are doing, what we are doing tomorrow, what, how we are approaching these issues. Yeah. We As cannot label it black, white, exactly. so on. Yeah. We need to, that is, you know, the, the, the the Commonwealth way to approaching these issues. Right? Well, I, I'll, I'll give you good news. I, t I talked to a lot of people as a media, as a journalist, and uh, what they told me lately, uh, th that there's a calm before storm. And they use the word rev revolution uh, for PPC, that it's a Canadian revolution happening right now as it is, and you and uh, your team is part of it. Uh, why is it a revolution? Like, what is so drastic change about it? Yeah, well. The Revolution is about, uh, you know, people finding right political platform. Right. People didn't, in Canada, people didn't have right platform to express their political opinion freely. Freely. That's right. what I call uh, our party as a revolution for Canadians. Okay. That's why we are the People's Party of Canada. Because I don't see it as a revolution. You know why? So because you know why? Because uh, I think PPC is trying to get back to its core value, the original value, the original Canada. And that's not a revolution. It's get, uh, basically bringing back the reality what Canada was before. So right? let's, let's call it a velvet revolution like it was used in uh, some other parts of okay. the world. And okay. uh, it was a very big issue, for example, in the Czechoslovakia to separate Czechs and Slovaks mm -hmm. and so on. That was a peaceful, you know, discussion and all kinds of stuff around. Mm -hmm. So we need to have a dialogue, and that is the revolution. The dialogue, no violence, no nothing, but a dialogue because that we are here again mm -hmm. for what? To build this country. Tahir, I have seen uh, in Canadian politics, and it's very alarming, uh, a lot of radical elements getting into our federal and provincial uh, uh, parliaments. Um, how are we going to handle this when it comes to PPC, uh, your vetting process, or, you know, like how you're going to scrutinize uh, the candidates uh, to make sure that we get the right progressive people in parliament? I don't know, Anis, what do you, uh, what you exactly mean radical, but uh, to the extent I uh, understood you, our vetting process is good. Uh, our strategy is very clear for all Canadians, that 
all Canadians should represent Canadian values and Canadian issues in the parliament. Mm -hmm. No matter candidates come from whatever background, as you know my background, I am a very, uh, you know, sort of first generation immigrant background. Right. But for instance, if I get elected and I go to parliament, my task is to represent my riding, my country, not to represent my back home. Right. You know, yeah. because I am representing Canadian parliament, I would be representing Canadian parliament, not my back home parliament. Yeah. Yeah. So, based on that, I think our party is doing good job in terms of vetting candidates. Uh, as well as, I mean, there are other issues uh, in any society, our party definitely considers all those concerns and issues mm -hmm. uh, while it comes to vetting the candidates. So let me ask last question to Cornelio that uh, PPC, are you going to make a dent in Canadian politics uh, with liberal there and conservative there already for many years? Hopefully, we will be able to promote our uh, vision mm -hmm. to uh, progressive Canada. Mm -hmm. Of course, as uh, you know, uh, hate is not part of our party, mm -hmm. but in our party is, is unity. And for what? For building a better Canada for our children and our grandchildren. You have one minute each if you want to say to your co audience and the constituents. Absolutely. Uh, I would definitely say that we are in a position, the People's Party of Canada uh, is in a position in upcoming election to create and to make a difference in Canadian politics because we are a platform for peoples, mean for Canadians. Other parties, they are too much in elitism and they are deceiving Canadians and we will make a difference, a clear difference in Canadian politics. Cornelio, please go. So, my message is, uh, is the following. We need to build this country. We need unity and we need to, uh, to look for everybody's input. We are not making empty promises. I am not for empty promises. We need to have a strong country, a united country, which has the, the best recognition in the world. Well, thank you, gentlemen. And uh, this is it for today. Uh, thank you for watching our program. Uh, what immigration meant when I heard Maxime saying that uh, they would have a quality immigrants coming to country. Um, and we will have less um, threat to our security, safety and security, because you see the extremism uh, is, does not have a shape and a form. It could be in any shape and form. It, it, it looks like anybody. It couldn't even look like, uh, you know, our Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, pretty close. Uh, on that note, uh, this is Anis Farooqi signing off. Thank you for watching.